It's the Food Network. But, no, it's not the Food Network, but it's going to feel like that tonight, I promise. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Uh, these are amongst the funnest shows. Is that a word? Uh, the most fun programs that we have, and that is when I don't go to the rundown and I don't opine on everything that I think is the smartest thing I've ever said in the world, and I don't have to grill people about issues of public policy and the like. This is a program that uh, is going to air X number of times over the course of the year, or maybe even further. It's called we, it's what we call an evergreen program, which means it can play anytime, anywhere. And tonight's theme is just to meet a couple of really cool restaurant owners, both of whom work with their significant others, which I think is probably an unmitigated disaster. Uh, but what do I know? So with no further ado, we're just going to shoot the breeze with a couple of really cool people uh, separately and then together to see if we can get some common themes about the challenges and, and uh, thumbs up things that happen when you run great restaurants in, in our region. Of course, it's a fertile, fertile ground for terrific restaurateurs. Uh, look at this headline. This was, uh, you know, Valentine's Day-ish, and at the bottom, not the top photo, but the bottom photo is Nick and his wife Tracy, who run the very famous five-year running restaurant known as Avenue N, which is on what? Newman Avenue. Newman Avenue. Newman Avenue. It just, you yes. know, now listen, it took me. Uh, <laughs> it's all coming it together. It took me a couple of seconds <laughs> pre-show to figure that one out. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank it is you a pleasure so much. to have you. Pleasure is all mine. You work with your wife I every do. day. Yes. You all right? I have, I'm, I'm, do you need therapy? I'm doing all right. You might want to put her in this seat and ask her. She might give you a different answer. But um, no, we're. We're very privileged to work together, actually. Um, you would think the opposite, and, and we know that it does have its share of days where um, I'm sure she <laughs> would wish for the opposite, but we get along very well, and um, she is a fabulous partner, both in life and in the restaurant industry. She is wildly experienced, uh, decades uh, in this industry, and um, I wouldn't do it with anyone else. We'll get back to that part in a second. Thank Tell you. everybody what Avenue N does if they haven't experienced it already. Avenue N is a regional American restaurant focused on locally sourced products and just creating food that is comforting and nostalgic and familiar with progressive new takes on those items. Should you get meatloaf? From time to time, we do, actually. I mean, is it, so is it comfort <laughs> stuff? Yes, it is. I would say. Done a special different way. Exactly right. Exactly right. It's what mom used to make, but not the way mom makes it. That's a, that's a very good way. Well, we're the new mom and pop, you know? So it's it's the way the new mom makes yeah. it, I guess, and the new, the new pop makes it. Well, most restaurants crash and burn if they're going to within a year. You've been there five years, so obviously you're up and running in a big way, right? We're up and running in a big way. We have such great support from a fabulous clientele and uh, are truly blessed to, to be eyeballing our five-year anniversary. So working with your wife, and listen, I, I, I'm, I'm kidding, but you know, it seems to me that a business like this, you're up and running all the time, yes. right? So it's not like you're sitting at desks together. Correct. Just kind of staring at each other Correct. as accountants. I mean, you're, you're moving, you're moving. moving. So that helps a working relationship, correct? I think so, and we, our restaurant is very small. So um, you could argue that it can be like a steel cage death match in there, that the two of us are just gonna be at each other's eyeballs, but I try to stay in the kitchen and she tries to stay in the front of the house. And um, she's run some of the biggest uh, companies that New England uh, and the United States have to offer. And I've always been a, uh, a small little independent restaurant chef and together our skill sets have really created um, what we like to think of as a real fun environment that serves great food at a great value. You a local guy? I've been, well here's the thing Dan, I'm from New York and I grew up there um, throughout my New York youth, State? New, New York, York City. State, New York State. Um, Long Island to upstate and then I moved to um, Massachusetts where I stayed for just a few years, and then I came to Rhode Island in 2001. Oh, well, that is all. We're on the island. Where, where are you? Okay, born in Lindbrook. Okay. Raised in the Hudson Valley. Gotcha. So the beautiful upstate where we were doing farm fresh produce um, all the way back in the 90s before anyone was even talking about it. And in Mass, you were? Worcester, Massachusetts at two fabulous restaurants, um, the 111 Chop House and the Sole Proprietor. Massive operations. So then you went out to do this? I, well, I went, I went to Providence to work with uh, John Elke, who um, I was his chef for John Elke and Rick Brady's restaurant group from 2001 to 2009. Um, learned an awful lot about the industry from John, who I will credit as my mentor. And then I went out and headed for the Burbs in 2009. And 
Avenue Rent opened up in 2011. So it's been an interesting ride. How'd you get on the Food Network? You had a little battle <laughs> with uh, beat Bobby Flay? Bobby Flay. Um, did back he beat you? Bobby Flay did beat me, yes. And, um, and that was just fine because he's an excellent competitor and a fabulous chef. So um, I got onto the Food Network. Uh, they, a casting agency uh, reached out to me and said, uh, any interest in trying out for this next season of Beat Bobby Flay? I said, I would love that. Went through the process, and then uh, all of a sudden we shot, and I was up against um, a super talented chef out of New York City named Jeff. Jeff and I went head to head. By uh, a nose, I was able to win the first round to then go up against Bobby Flay. What did you make? Um, the first round, we made um, the secret ingredient was acorn squash, and you're supposed to come up with a dish in 20 minutes. So I made these acorn squash latkes with an apricot bacon jam and a whole grain mustard sauce. Really, really tasty, or at least the judges thought so. I hate squash. You, you, well, let, come by Avenue N sometime and let me set you up. We'll, we'll play squash so in the that, backyard and we'll eat no, squash latkes. That, now, now I'm going to have to have, you're going to have to make that for me because <laughs> there's not too many ways you can get me to eat squash. If you come by, yeah. I, I promise we'll... We'll work, we'll work on making you like squash. What is the Chef to Go thing? Chef to Go is my show, um, which I've been filming with Cox for six years. And it's a really great program, Dan. It's 100% Rhode Island-based businesses. And we started, um, this is now filming currently our sixth season of Chef to Go. Um, the first five seasons were aired on Cox. This season is now on coxhub.com. You can see all the episodes we've shot. And basically what we do is we go and visit local restaurants or local entrepreneurs or a local farm or a local fishing boat, and they sort of welcome us into their environment with open arms and show us the ins and out of their, their operation. We eat their food or we see their practices, and we'll visit two or three places per episode. And at the end, it culminates with me creating a dish in the studio kitchen based on the day's experiences. So it's a ton of fun. Cool. And we visited over 85 area businesses right now zero expense to the business except for their time so it's that's a very uh, that's a very presentable opportunity for businesses i agree there's no downside for there, that. there's no downside you know you shoot with us for for you know two to three hours and all of a sudden you have something that that lives forever it lives online it repeats on tv this is a seinfeld trivia thing that you're <laughs> this was with the road show now um never heard of the road, show? the road show so i love the road show and and anyone that knows me knows um how near and dear that show is to my heart so i was on it one morning and uh, when you're in a kitchen you have two um two monitors, one that's sort of five seconds ahead of the other and the other one. So while you're waiting to go, you hear um, what the uh, hosts are, are talking about. So Brendan Kirby is sitting there talking about a Seinfeld anniversary that had just occurred. And he said, anyone that wants to challenge me to a Seinfeld trivia contest, I will gladly take you up on it. So I'm not sure if he thought that that was just going to go in the world's ear and right out the other, but it popped in my head, which is empty. Brendan's so there was a, a lot off, of space. You know. He's a little off. Well, I, <laughs> you know, I love Brendan like a brother. I think we're all a little off from time <laughs> to time. Um, but he did say that, and he, he unofficially issued this challenge. So at the end of the show, he sent me a text, hey, great show today, and I repeated to him. Same to you. And by the way, anytime you want to throw it out, I'm your man. He took it very seriously. Have you done it? We did it. We started having meetings, and um, we had this incredible night where um, our friends Phil and Lexi did this incredible teleprompter program with all the questions around for the audience to see. It was live at Avenue N. We had podiums. Michaela was the moderator for the show. It was sensational fun. Sensational fun. Who won? 15,000 to zero. Brendan won. <laughs> Well, it's nice to have you on the show. Well, Thank you very much. In, uh, we're going to bring him back. In fairness. In no, fairness. I didn't want to hear anymore. All that. I went all in all on, that, on final. You can't beat Bobby Flay, and you got to beat 15,000 to nothing from Brendan Kirby? I'm not who looking thinks too he's good the next right Letterman? Now. I'm not looking too good right oh, now. Oh, my goodness. You know what? You're out. Brendan, you're the man, baby. Su all right, don't. Susan's next. Have you been to the clean plate? You should. You will after the next segment. Stay with us. I bet you Susan could beat Brendan in Seinfeld. The, the, uh, Rhode Island Monthly recently did a little piece on Clean Plate, our next restaurant tours place. 
Are you any good with Seinfeld? Or, or, Actually, no? I'm good with Seinfeld. You are? Yeah. Oh, well, now I, know, I wasn't asked. Well, now I know what we're going to do in the next <laughs> segment. I'm, I'm going to have to bring Nick back, and we'll have a real, I don't know, it's not going to be like they do the other show, but maybe we can do something here. Maybe. Welcome. Nice to have you. Nice to be Clean here. Clean Plate is what kind of place? It's my fifth restaurant. It's the one that's the most fun to do. Mm. It's foods that I like to eat. Mm. Love sandwiches. Love ethnic foods. The menu is, encompasses all of that. There's some local, there's some Jewish, there's some Asian, Trinidad, just all over at one place. You know, you just said something really interesting. <laughs> I've never asked a restaurant owner ever whether they liked the cuisine that they were making. Hmm. I don't think of ever what, either in person or on shows or. Any, see, I couldn't do that because I can't make a sandwich without cheating. Right. Honestly, <laughs> I'd be. I'd be. If you think I'm fat now? It'd be like this if I if I made if I ran a restaurant with stuff that I'd like to eat. That's got to be a challenge. It's hard. It's hard every day. Uh, you don't pick. I'll call, of course I'll you do. You do pick. It's French fries you and corned beef and Every once potato in a while. pancakes and you just. It's the hand to mouth disease. Yes. You know, but at least you'll go happy, you yeah. know, you know. <laughs> uh, Heavy from real food, not junk. Do you also work with your partner? I do. How's that working out? There are some days it's fantastic, and other days it's challenging. Hmm. A little bit more sober Day. response than I got in the last segment from <laughs> Nick. I think, I, I think he won more brownie points with his wife than you're, <laughs> than, than you're uh, earning with Lauren. <clears throat> we'll have to see how this whole thing turns well, out. Well, we've been together 22 years. She'll tell you it's 40 because we spend so much time together, so... All right. You know. So you're from New York. New York. Or upstate New York, so you don't really say it that I'm way. I'm from Long Island. Where in the island? West Hempstead. Okay. Well, you know, I was born in Flushing. I lived in Glen Cove, Port Washington, Huntington. Mm -hmm. That's all I remember. You're a North Shore boy. Yeah, yeah. But I get claustrophobia when I go down Long Island. It's right. too much. You, too come many over the, you just come over the bridge, over the throck, and I go, oh my God, whatever, something happened, I never get out of here. <laughs> uh, but that's my problem. Uh, how's running the business? It's hectic. Labor of it's love, tough. though, right? right? Labor of love. I've been doing it 35 years. How many have you had this restaurant? How many years? Four, 15 months. Okay. We're new. So you're just, but you've done them before. Yeah. So you know, you know what you're doing. I know what I'm doing. Is it the year that really makes the, the is it a year that determines whether or not you're going to fly or not? Pretty much. Two years. Two years. Two years. 50% go out the first year. Of that 50%, 50% go out the second year. What do you think causes that? Not knowing what you're doing, not knowing your labor costs, not understanding what your clients want. Hmm. Our menu has changed five times since we opened. Really? Yeah. Why? Some things work, some things don't. Got to be flexible just, enough to change. Yeah. But still stay within what? Your vision and category? With my vision. Yeah. It's still all in there. I want to. We wanted to build a place that was affordable, comfortable, fabulous fresh fruit, food, reasonably priced. And I personally love a sandwich for dinner. Bowl of cereal, sandwich, you know, goes hand in hand. And if I'm going out to the theater or I'm going out somewhere special, I don't necessarily always want to spend $150 on dinner for two. Amen, sister. I want to go out and have a really good meal. You could really still have meal. a nice dinner, though. Right. It's nice to blow some dough every once in a while, but does it have to be a burden? No. No. You get a really good burger, right. really good sandwich. Right. Know it's made with love. See me back there crazy in the kitchen. It all comes from here. Do restaurateurs who fail not have it in here? I think so. Because they're doing it for reasons that other, that are other than here, mm -hmm. like I mean, you've been in business a long time. Mm, money. They think that there's money in it. There isn't. <laughs> <laughs> very well, little. There's well, very little. It's more satisfaction. It's more ego boosting. It's more creative. It's my way of be of expression. So you don't necessarily go into it to say, okay, as long as we get this model, it'll take us 18 months to get this thing up and another year to perfect it, and then we've got a model, and then we can franchise, and then we're out of there, and then we make a million. That's not the way you approach that's it. That's not how I approach it. But that's probably the way a lot of people do approach mm -hmm. it, and that's when they don't get it done, right? Maybe. I mean, some do, Maybe. but not I a mean, lot. I mean, you have to have big backing for that. Yeah. 
You have to have big backing for that. Margins are hard. Oof. I Margins often are wonder, do you have booze? Yeah. you got to have the booze. The booze is the profit. Booze is the profit. The food is almost like the, the, the uh, what, the lost leader mm -hmm. in some ways. Is that true? In some ways, yes. Yeah. So yeah. really knowing how to build your product mm -hmm. economically and market with the right price yeah. is the big challenge. And like Nick, because I'm a chef owner, I know where my costs go. I know how to make things from things. Where'd you learn all that? I went to the Matchbook School of Cooking, which I, was the New York Restaurant School. I don't even know if it's still in existence in 1982. I thought you made that up. That's a real school. It's a real school, the New York Restaurant School. But I don't know if it's still there. It was on 34th Street between Macy's and B. Altman's. Really? Yeah. It was fantastic. They taught you everything you knew? They taught us everything we knew in well, 18 weeks. In 18 weeks. Really? Yep. It was $2,200. I had to take out a student loan. Yeah, but you, yeah. Didn't, you didn't learn everything you had to know in 18 no, weeks because no. you're learning every day about your business. I learn every day. And I read every day and I watch things every day and I taste new things all the time and you're constantly learning, constantly experiencing new things. What's new the biggest flavors. joy you get from running this restaurant? At the end of the day, when it's gone well. Or if someone pops their head in the kitchen and they go, that was great, and you're like, yeah. Or the other day someone called me out, which I normally don't like, and he had had my matzo ball soup. And he said, it's as good as my bubbies. What, what more can you get? You sleep well that night. Sleep well that night. Right, and right. you hope you do it again the next day. All right. All right. So both of these fine restaurant tours that we've had on have been out of state. When we come back, we'll talk about what it's like to actually figure out Rhode Island. Stay with us. <laughs> All right, if you missed any part of the show, you'll find it on foxprovidence.com because if you just tuned in, you didn't see Nick because he was in the first segment. He embarrassed himself because yeah. he thought of himself as a Seinfeld expert, and we found out that you guys clocked me by Brendan Kirby. My specialty, <laughs> embarrassing myself. By the way, let me just say this. You know, Brendan, I, Brendan knows I've been a huge fan of him for a long time, uh, and that's all I have to say about that. Uh, uh, <laughs> but you say you're a Seinfeld. Um, um, to, to, here's the thing. I've watched I'm it. the worst person to offer to manage a contest between you two. You know why? Because people think, oh, you're on the radio and you're on television. You must be really smart. No. And, um, and, two, and you must be able to remember. I can't remember anything. Yeah. So you, you, so you uh, trivia used to be hot. Yes. It's not hot anymore. I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. Trivia used to be a thing world. we did. At, you know, when you went out. You had a board right. game. Right. Too, you don't do that anymore. Yeah. So anyway, uh, idle chatter. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> your two restaurants. Avenue N in the pantry and Clean Plate over here um, are products of your experience in other places, correct? I mean, you, correct. You're, you're restaurant touring in, in Long Island and upstate New York and you in Massachusetts and upstate New York and your New York City experience. Is there a nuance about, about Rhode Island that is different to make people happy? And share, talk, don't, there's no rules here. Yeah, I mean, Rhode Island, a lot of it is very traditional. And um, especially when I first came into town, um, if you're an out-of-towner, you would expect that. You know, you're coming to Rhode Island, whether it be for tourism um, or any reason, um, you would expect this sort of traditional Rhode Island fair to sort of be prevalent around every street corner. Um, and it's not. You know, what is is fabulous restaurants like Susan's and little eateries like Avenue N and chef-driven entrepreneur places where the where the blood, sweat, and tears is, is happening within the building, and they're progressing and innovating on a daily basis. I don't know what you mean by traditional. Are you the, expectation, the expectations of the customers are traditional? No, no, certainly not. I think, what would you say in a, in a single word would sum up Rhode Island food? Is there something that immediately pops into your head? Is it fertile food? ground? Is it, is it, I, I totally Just, agree I mean, with you. fertile ground, like the choices are awesome. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'll be running a radio show and people would just be moaning the General Assembly and bemoaning the truck tolls and bemoaning the taxes and bemoaning the, and there's only two things that they say, but thank God for. We got the water yeah. and we got the greatest restaurants in the world. I and agree. if not for that culture, we might be really in trouble. Yeah. But it really dictates our pace, doesn't it? But it's a lot of independent restaurants, which is what's so great. Mm. Yes. 
young people striking out on their own and, and creating incredible things like North and Birch and Avenue N and us. You know, it's all. Well, it's nice you say that because, you know, one of the things I hate about our new modern economy is that it's big box store across America. Right. And you don't know whether you're in Dayton, Ohio or, uh, you know, Rehoboth, Massachusetts. It doesn't because matter. Because the strip looks the same yes. with the box. Restaurant tour. I mean, restaurants can happen that way too. And you know, there's the Hooters and there's the. Why did I think of Hooters right away? <laughs> there was. I think they closed a while ago. No, but no, no. there's one by the end. No, there is. Oh, there's yeah. still. <laughs> I'm sure there is. <laughs> Been a long day, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know the the Chipotle's and the and they had a yeah. little problem too. Oh, geez, yeah. you know, many. But there's so many yeah. idiosyncratic places yeah. that you can go and find yourself, and then be able to say, "Hey, by the way, I found a new place," and then you're cool to somebody else because you passed the word. Is that what you're trying to get accomplished? Yes, absolutely. And I think that it's it's great for for the Rhode Island economy if we're talking economy because these small little restaurants are a draw and they're bringing people across borders and they're creating jobs and tax revenue and if they're sustainable because we support each other then it's part of the big machine instead of just a little tiny family run restaurant or independent independently run restaurant so there's a lot you can say to support a small local restaurant as opposed to um, larger corporate restaurants I could talk to you guys all day let me ask you this Are, does, does it drive you crazy how price conscious people are? Yes. See, I'm not. Not that I'm rich. It's just not my thing. I don't worry about pricing. Mm. And, 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 I, but I'm told by everybody that runs a restaurant that it is the number one worry that people will leave you for what they think is a 50 cent too high price for one of your great sandwiches or one of your specialty squashes on the side. <laughs> well, you know? I. Is that, is that overstated, or what, what do you think? I don't know. I think it depends on, on the restaurant that you're, that you're asking. Um, you know, we, we just want to develop. We don't want to, be, we don't want to price ourselves out into this land of special occasion. You know, we want to be approachable. We want to be uh, a place you can visit with some regularity that you don't drive by and say that. But at the same time, if you're offering products that are special, that are unique, that are different, and you're being true to yourself, you said the, Susan said the best thing. She said the best thing when she creates food that she likes to eat. You that's, too? Absolutely. Okay. And, that's, and that creates an authentic environment because we all have plates, we all have pots, we all have pans, we all have little lights dangling from the ceiling and brick walls and, you know, these little pretty things. Mm -hmm. But what separates each of us from each other and gives a restaurant a little bit of character is the authenticity that spawns from the entrepreneur. And Avenue N is the type of food that I like to eat. And it's a price point that I'm comfortable paying. Best place, best thing about working in Rhode Island in your year and a half is? I don't know, I just love Rhode Island. I, just, I love the smallness of it. I love everything's right there. Fresh fish, fresh produce, nice people. Water fire, I'm on the, I'm on the water. Right. I just love it. I've been welcomed with very open arms. Ten Good seconds place. and a lot of people ought to come see you. Oh, we're fun. <laughs> the, food, the food is fun. The food is Great vibrant. Answer. It is clean. And? Tracy. <laughs> right. <laughs> you win. Right. <laughs> you know what? No grass growing on this guy. It was a pleasure meeting you both. We'll see you at the restaurant. Yes. All right. Thank you, Dan. Final word Thank when we you. get back, students.